So, so you are one of the uh, few surgeons in the area that's doing the anterior total. Explain to us what that means. Yeah, I'm really excited about doing that. I was trained in that technique, um, it, it, you know, before. But traditionally, doing an anterior total hip is extremely difficult without special equipment. And uh, recently, our hospital just purchased this very fancy, what we call the, the HANA table. Um, this allows us to expose the hip the correct way to do this anteriorly. And the reason I'm excited about this technique is that it is really a, um, it's not a new way of doing hip replacement, but this way has been around. But the, our, our modern interpretation of this technique allow us to do this safely and predictably. And the advantage of this by far is that we don't have to split any muscle. We actually get into the hip joint without cutting any muscle. And so um, the patient actually feel far less pain after surgery. And afterward, the recovery is a lot faster. And traditionally, people hear about, oh, I'm going to have a hip replacement. It's going to pop out a socket. Um, that's the reason because we have to take out some of the little muscle in the hip that holds the hip in. And with this anterior approach, we're able to do a hip replacement and keep all these little muscles. So and the dislocation rate is maybe 120th of traditional hip replacement. So what you're talking about is you're going through the front of the hip joint versus kind of what the traditional technique was the posterior lateral or going basically through your buttocks muscles. Yeah, you can go through the buttocks muscle. Or you can go through the side. There's actually five, seven way of different, get, different way of getting into the hip joint. Uh, this is the only way that we can get into the hip joint without taking down any muscle. And when you take down the muscles or you split the muscles, what happens postoperatively that makes that area weak. And a lot of people, like you said, used to dislocate from that weakness. Yeah. So with this anterior approach, you can be more aggressive in the rehab, people can return to activity. What's the advantages yeah, of that? Well, in, in terms of, you know, um, Shannon, you're a physical therapist. Right. You know, after surgery, we put patient on certain kind of hip precaution. We told them not to cross the leg certain way, be careful on bending over and all that different Forever things. Forever or just right after you know, surgery? initially, uh-huh. very strict, but you're always at risk for dislocation. So, uh-huh. you know, guys who had hip replacement 10 years out, if they go skiing and they're not super careful about putting on their bindings, the hip can pop out. Mm-hmm. But this particular way of doing it, uh, we actually preserve all that little muscle, which is very important to keep in the hip in the socket. So actually, immediately after surgery, right now, our patient on the floor, if I do it through this technique, um, they don't have any precaution. Therapists are ecstatic. They right. don't have to worry, explain to them not to cross a leg, all that different thing. There's no elevated toilet seat. All right. that stuff we have for patient before doesn't really apply to this group of patients. Wow. That's, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds great from a therapist standpoint. Yeah. It sounds wonderful because, I mean, sometimes just getting the patient to understand the precautions is half the battle. So, I mean, the other thing, too, during surgery, if you're not splitting the muscle or moving the muscle, it seems like it's going to be less painful for the patient. It is for sure less painful. In fact, I had a patient I done recently that a few years ago I done a traditional technique from the back. And we just did another technique this time around. He said it was night and day. He was off the pain medication within five days of surgery. What is? Go ahead. I was just going to ask how long the uh, the old way. How long are you in the hospital for, and how long are you in the hospital for now? Well, well typically, you know, um, people stay in the hospital for about you know anywhere from three to five days, mm-hmm. depending on the age, depending on how they recover. Right. But a lot of these folks who you would do this anterior, they have so little pain. In fact, we actually have them. T- have to tell them not to do too much mm-hmm. slow them down a little bit yeah slow them down a little bit because you know the tissues still have to heal and all that stuff um but it's really exciting because um because this group of patients actually you know um recover rather quickly wow we are uh th- this is this is incredible stuff dr bill wong uh, my doc from uh everbone and joint we're talking about the new uh uh hip replacement surgeries um th- how long do these hips last well, that is a difficult question to right. answer. Okay. Um, typically, what I tell patients is there's a 1% failure rate per year. So if you extrapolate that out, at one year after surgery, there's a 99% chance your knee or hip is doing well. Mm-hmm. At 10 years, there's probably a 90% chance that it's still doing well and 10% chance additional surgery will need to be done. But that's based on the older stuff. I mean, right. I think the material we have uh, – more recently, in fact, the one that you have in yeah. your body are what we consider the more modern material. I think those data right now are suggesting that our, our implant is going to last twice as long. Hmm. You know, when you do a hip replacement, particularly anterior, does it, does it I mean, I know your, you know your technique, is it easier to do that for you guys if you go anterior? I mean, getting the height and the placement of the new prosthesis? 
actually uh, actually is more precise because we do this particular way we can judge the leg we have x-ray doing surgery uh, without that table I'm talking about it's extraordinarily difficult to do that surgery but now with that new equipment we have at Providence um, it actually uh, makes it feasible to do this operation and just so people out there listening know Bill has a fellowship in total joints and that means you know after your surgical residency you went on to an extra year just in total joint replacement particularly knee and hip that's correct so when when would you recommend so that just means that he's really good at doing yeah it. Yeah, yeah and we really good at do doing it. anterior <laughs> posterior both but more anterior yeah <laughs> so when in in your experience when do you see people seeking your attention is it a quality of life is it just pain i mean why do people have or want their hip replaced? I think it would be a combination of both. I think Maury can attest to that. Right. When you get to a point that you have pain and you can't do the stuff that you enjoy doing and your quality of life become, be, you know, uh, starting to deteriorate. And I think that's when you start treating. And most, most of the time we start out with conservative management and try the medication, try the injection. But when that fails, the only thing we got is to replace it. This is going to be a stupid question. But but I wouldn't know what where in my body is my hip gonna the pain I'm gonna be looking for for my hip. Great question because a lot of time folks come and see me and ask me, well, my hip hurt, and they point to the back. Right. So most of the time, ninety percent of the time, people who have hip arthritis will be complaining of anterior groin pain, right mm-hmm. in that groin area. Mm-hmm. Um, we it, call it pocket pain. Yeah, and that's where if they hurt in that area, there's a high likelihood the pain is coming from the hip socket. Got and, it. And, okay. and that pain, uh, most people describe it kind of as a nagging toothache. I mean, sometimes they have it at rest. Yeah. I mean, it just kind of just doesn't go away. It's there all the time. All the time. That's the biggest thing, pain. Yeah. And you know what? The ones I see postoperatively at two to three weeks, that's the biggest thing they tell me is, wow, I wish I would have done this a long time yeah. ago because my pain has gone away. Now, they have a little bit of rehab to do. Yeah. But basically, six weeks post-op, I mean, they're doing pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. And, and these group of patients who um, get an anterior total hip, um, the study have shown that at six weeks, they're functioning at a higher level compared to traditional patient in terms of wow. all the stuff that we can measure in terms of activity and in terms of their endurance and in terms of strength. They're all better because we did not violate the muscle. Yeah, the muscles are a big thing. A big key here is not, not splitting or taking down the muscle. Yeah. How long has the anterior approach been around? It's been around just as long as any other technique. It's just because of lack of the appropriate uh, equipment, um, only very few people have have been doing anterior because exposure is very difficult. And if you do an anterior approach, let's say, you know, by chance you have to have a revision, is it better that you did the first one anterior? Does it make a difference, I mean, in um, the revision? There, there are folks um, perform revision through the front. I mean, you can do that through the front. Can I, can I ask a question? You talk about revision. What breaks down, hardware or the patient? Um, usually it's a hardware. Or the hardware. Yeah, okay, usually, you're going to wear you're yeah. going to wear this thing out. Yeah, usually the hip, the hip or knee socket, the 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 material in there over time is kind of like any bearing surface um just get worn out after so many cycle of use. And once that start wearing out, it generally inflammation and it cause a cause a body to react to it. And that's the reason why we go after it. So when when you do this, I mean you're putting a new stem and ball in and then a new cap in the socket. Yeah. Are you are these glued in or this bony ingrowth? These are bony ingrowth. These these are um, has small little pores on the surface that over time, in, in the first month and a half, the bone actually grow into these little pores. If if somebody is is young and active and they have their hip replaced, what is there anything that they can't do that you suggest they don't do after they get their hip replaced? You know, great question. People have done that study on what activity level leads to premature failure of knee or hip replacement. Right. Um, you know, those studies are, are, you know, they're not a whole lot of study out there. But generally, we recommend um, avoiding impacting activities. Mm-hmm. So, i.e., you know, any kind of running and jumping. And what I typically tell a patient is that there's a distinct difference of doing those exercises for fun or doing those exercises for f- exercise. Right. So if you run because a dog is chasing you, or <laughs> if, you're, if you're running because occasionally you play some basketball, I think that's fun. Right. But 
if you end up running your goal is to do a marathon, I think you'll put additional wear to the sure. um, implant. So it's impact. It's the pounding yeah. type stuff. Well, like when you were talking about you were talking about somebody uh, skiing with it, uh, it, you know, I was thinking if I had a total hip replacement, skiing would be the farthest thing that I would think about doing. Warren yeah. Miller. Warren Miller, I think, yeah. has both his hips really? replaced. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at Bill, me. I, thank you. I jumped You're out welcome. of a plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah with a knee. Uh, wow, this is crazy stuff. For more information, everettboneandjoint.com is a great place to go to when 